worship at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse, New York, as we celebrate this 25th Sunday after Pentecost, and we become very close to the end of our church calendar year with Christ the King, which is next Sunday. Whether you're here in person or with us online, please know that however you're able to worship with us, your presence always enriches our time together. The readings for today speak of the final resurrection and the end of time, offering predictions that provoke feelings of turmoil filled with hope, fear, and disbelief. Jesus makes a way for us where there is no way, and we walk it confidently. Our hearts and bodies washed in baptismal water, trusting the one who has promised forgiveness. The more we see this last day approaching, the more important it is for us to gather and provoke one another to love. Now I invite you all to join me in a time of confession and forgiveness. You may stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is built on a rock. If you're using a hymnal, it's hymn number 652. We are going to be singing stanzas one and three. <laughs>
with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from Daniel. At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people shall arise. There shall be a time of anguish such as never occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, come to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the selection from Psalm 16 responsibly. I will begin with the odd verses, and you may follow with the even. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have I set, set the Lord always before me. me. Because, because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy ones see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. with our 
church building standing empty for well over a year as the daily death toll rose more and more each day. Death and destruction also seem to be quite high in the minds of those who authored our readings for today. Yet, what we hear in these readings can only really offer a glimpse of the people in their time and their place. The message, originally intended for those in turmoil, brings with it the promise of something more. Something beyond death and destruction, a promise of wholeness restored, of resurrection and new life, a life that may only be possible if at first there is death. Let's imagine just for a moment that we're standing alongside those early disciples looking up amazed as we stand before one of the largest and greatest buildings of all time. Their experience reminds me a little of my first trip to New York City, walking down the canyon of skyscrapers with my head tilted all the way back and my eyes looking straight up and my mouth, of course, hanging wide open. Luckily, there were no birds flying over. I've seen large buildings before, but nothing like that. Perhaps this is how Jesus' first disciples felt as they remarked, Wow! Look at that, teacher! Check out the size of those stones. Have you ever seen such large buildings in your life? Surprisingly, Jesus' response is rather blunt, almost to the point of being annoyed. He tells them that the temple's future is short-lived. Not one stone will be left on stone. It kind of makes you wonder, how did they respond to such words? Perhaps they were just too shocked to say anything at the time. How would we respond? What would it mean for us to be told that our beloved holy place would soon tumble to the ground? Once we imagine it, perhaps we can make the leap to what we have experienced over the last year or so. While the bricks and mortar of our church building still stands, there was a long stretch of time when the doors were locked, when no one was allowed in except when something needed tending, and it rarely did. <clears throat> Excuse me. For many long months, we didn't enter the building for the purposes of which we had so long taken for granted. The organ stood still, cobwebs gathered here and there. The memory of our voices began to fade. The communion ware remained stored away in a cabinet in, unused for months on end. One colleague noted that she had heard a comment more than once during this time, and she even muttered it herself a time or two. Why do we even have a building when it's not being used as it once was? No, the stones hadn't been thrown down, but at times it sure seemed as though they might as well have been. Perhaps, it takes something of this magnitude for many of us from our places of privilege to even begin to get a glimpse not only of the struggle, but also of the promise that waits on the other side of what Jesus describes today. Standing where we are, I, for one, am grateful to have the experience 
experience in deep certainty that this building could stand empty. And yes, perhaps it could even be destroyed. But that faith, the faith that we hold and that holds us, would endure because it did and it does. Yet even as we congratulate ourselves for remaining faithful and returning to our building or videos each week for worship, I know that there are things, as there always are, in the gospel that go far deeper than we may at first consider. Things perhaps that we may never understand completely. While we may focus primarily on our worship building, there are many other places and people of concern. Think of all the nurses, some of whom are members of our congregation, especially those who've witnessed far too much death in the past year and a half. Even as we pray with them and for them, we are witnesses to all that they have lost, some of which they may not even be able to name as of yet. And there are many others, those who work tirelessly to serve, support, and care for people with COVID-19 and other life-threatening or life-changing illnesses or diseases. Those responding to emergencies, isolating patients, giving CPR to unknown individuals, putting out fires of every kind, using whatever methods and tools that are available to ensure that our health and wellness needs are met. Then there are those who haven't even been able to experience some of the privileges we take for granted those who can't imagine the promise of a new life, of being welcomed home to a beloved place of worship, of being kindly cared for by others, of having enough food to eat, not just once, but three times a day, of feeling safe in their own homes and in their neighborhood, of feeling loved just for who they are. Perhaps the past year and a half has given us at least some understanding. Perhaps we've gained knowledge that we simply couldn't have had before, if only through the very limited ways that our lives have been impacted. Having to stay isolated, wear a mask, getting tested over and over again, the fear of getting sick, having to stay physically distanced from loved ones, all the while anxiously wondering what the future would hold for us. Maybe if we push ourselves to go a little deeper into what has happened to us as individuals and as a whole, perhaps we can begin to build a deeper sense of empathy for the limitations and difficulties of others, that of our neighbors, who all too often experience lives far removed from what God intends. Even now, we might begin to recognize our neighbors, to call them by name, to stand still as best as we can in the experience that they hold which may be quite different from our own. Perhaps through our own experience and that of our neighbors, we can hear Jesus' words today as more than just a message of death and destruction. Perhaps we can also hear within them a promise of new life. Even as we begin to experience worlds that we may have taken for granted, perhaps even with all the stones being 
from them. Jesus' promise for those first disciples is also for us. It reminds us of his constant abiding presence in our lives, especially during our most difficult times, especially when everything seems to be crashing down around us, when we're having trouble with a job or a relationship, physical or mental health issues, experiencing anxiety or fear, a crisis of faith or a crisis of life. Christ is with us through it all, guiding us from a focus on buildings and things to one of relationships, to loving God and neighbor. Today, we're being led to remember those who haven't heard or perhaps have forgotten Jesus' promise of new life. For our friends and family members, neighbors, and folks in the community, those who need us not to fix them, but to stand with them right where they are, to walk with them in their journey, whether or not we think we know how. You see, God walks with us, eternally present among us. Jesus is our final hope. He is the eternal love of God given for us. He is the grace of God shed for us. He is God's promise of new life for us all. This is indeed news that is just too good for us not to share. Wow, check it out. Have you ever seen or heard something so amazing? God is at work in the world all around us at this very moment. Thanks be to God.
dedicate our gifts and commitments to God. We dedicate our pledges for the new year to you, O oh God. Help us use them to glorify you, to be vessels of your works in this world. We dedicate our pledges to you, O oh God. Use us, O oh God, to do your work on this in this world. As we pray over these gifts, we ask for your blessing upon them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, which is hymn number 438. My Lord, what a morning. We will sing verses 1 and stanzas 1 and 3. <laughs> Especially those on our prayer list 
and those we offer out loud or in our hearts. every fear of each person, supply every need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God, our beginning and our end, your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We're not quite safe enough to reach out and shake hands and hug, but we can and we should offer a sign of God's peace to one another whether we're greeting one another in person or online, let us reach out to others with the love and peace of God for us all. God works in us, through us, and through our giving to support the ministries of God in our church, including the care of those in need. If you need assistance of any kind, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and, give, and can give even a little bit more, we deeply appreciate your generosity. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all.
my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the highest kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to get out your little communion kit. If you have not gotten one from the table, raise your hand, please, and we'll make sure you get one. If you need help opening it, please raise your hand, and we'll make sure you get some help. Peel back the top layer to reveal the wafer and put that in your hand. Then peel back the bottom layer to re reveal the juice. And then hold them up so that I know you are ready and that we'll all be ready to partake of communion together. Whether it's worship with us in person, masks, 
optional if you're vaccinated, or online at a time that suits you best. Either way, we always appreciate your presence. After worship this morning, we're going to take a five-minute break uh, for a nature break and also to set up our Zoom meeting. And then we will begin our congregation meeting. If you're a member, please plan to stay as we need a quorum to vote on the budget for 2022. Are there any other? No. Hearing none, I invite you to stand for the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is soon and very soon. Hymn number 439, we'll be singing stanzas one, three, and four. <laughs> Thank you. 